Uh, we're gonna do this in, in English. I hope everyone's uh, okay with that. And yeah, you're here to learn something new, right? In, in web development, something that can replace Webpack. Uh, Webpack, if, uh, who, el who is uh, full stack here in, in front end developers? Like everyone. So everyone of you been, been using Webpack or underneath of, let's say, Angular or, or React, right? React app or um, Vue.js. So if you're using Webpack and this topic is uh, for you to see two alternatives. So we have Turbo Pack, which is one in the title, but uh, I submitted that uh, proposal in this conference like a month ago, but three weeks ago, there's a new Rust-based uh, bundler, which is also good. And I included that in my talk and I'm going to explain that later and you will see that in demo. Test mic, test mic, yes. So, um, let's turn this on, slides. So, uh, who am I? I'm Devlin Duldulao, originally from, from Philippines. And, and let's see, here, so yes, that place. Um, Recently, I moved to, not recently, I moved four years ago to Oslo, Norway, and now I'm, I'm, I'm working there as a chief consultant. And also wrote uh, three books, uh, Vue.js, ASP.NET Core, and Practical Enterprise Rack, and uh, co-authored that, and also uh, Spring Boot Angular co-authored that. So yeah, just a little bit about me. So Turbo Pack and RS Pack. So this is, uh, this is a, a car design that shows you different pieces that were put together to, to build this car, right? So similarly in, in, in software applications, these pieces are called, uh, I would say, modules, right? You can also say that in, in Rack, Rack components. Um, and these are building blocks of Rack application. Creating, creating modules, to build a software or, or a car gives us benefits. Hmm? Creating modules gives us benefits, which are first, isolation. So isolation allows uh, people to, to work individually on the car or the application without delaying someone, right? Another benefits of having these uh, modular uh, components, composability, so clear boundaries for, for each uh, individual component uh, they're able to, to compose uh, each piece together to create a fully functioning feature. Another one, benefits, would be uh, reusability, right? So you can reuse the same components. For example, in, in this car would be the wiper or, or the wheels, or the seats also. I got confused with my, yeah. So wheels, wiper, seats, they are reusable. Um, Next would be organization. So the effect of each individual piece having clear boundaries with for, for how they, they interact with each other. So you have organization, putting them together, and then let them talk to each other, right? So those are the benefits. And then how do we modularize our code before? So brief history, before we have this uh, IFE, we call it IFE or IIFF, IIFE. So it mimics uh, module scope back in the days, 10 years ago, uh, and can, can hide variables. That's good. Self contained, et cetera. So IFE helped us create module pattern you know, back in the days. And then here comes CommonJS. So CommonJS, built for, for Node.js originally, and, and uh, it's, uh, it helps us write uh, synchronized code. Another one in the history, we have this AMD or asynchronous module definition. So an example of AMD is required.js, it's a library. I don't know if you've, you've used it before, it's a long time ago. So AMD uh, fixes dependency resolution and the uh, pollution of, of global scope because there's a problem with, with uh, suddenly your, your variables has changed and you don't know that it's somewhere out there in, in other files. So, we use CommonJS and AMD to share libraries through, through uh, NPM packages. 
So, but how do we use uh, common JS in the browser if it's built for, for Node.js and it's uh, synchronous? Through Browserify. So Browserify is made to support common JS in the browsers. It is a module bundler, no? module bundler that, that reads I think this is the first first module bundler. It's a module bundler that, that reads all requires and module exports and, and bundles all JS files into one bundle.js file. And the browser file needs uh, gulp and grunt task runners to to make it work. Probably you've you've used it, grunt and 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 uh, gulp. Some old project is still using those those uh, task runners. And then after that we have Webpack. So Webpack is a module bundler also that can do things more than what Br Browserify can do, such as it, it can detect your code uh, and it can detect uh, unused code hmm, while combining with, with files. It can also serialize the code and load it only when it's necessary and monitor file alterations or changes and also transpile uh, code to ES5, which the browser can understand, et cetera. Um, it can also concatenate multiple files together into a single bundle for the browser. The problem with this is the process becomes increasingly slow as you add, uh, as you add more, more code in the app. I don't know about you, but if you experience huge Rack application or huge Angular application, it takes time for you to, to see the changes when you uh, try to change CSS or any text, control save, command S, right? And it takes five seconds or sometimes six seconds be before you can see the changes, right? The problem is if it takes uh, 10 seconds that long, sometimes developer would check their phone, look for, for uh, look on their Instagram because the, the application is still, you know, trying to rebuild, right? And that's a problem. It's, it's, uh, it, it stops your productivity. And that's why in 2015, um, ECMAScript modules were introduced. So ES, uh, ES modules is a module system that is now big in JavaScript language or ECMAScript. So out of the box, it supports async loading in modules. The import keyword now works in, in the browser, but needs server to be able to, to fetch with import. And um, if you've tried VIT, VIT is it's a French word, right? VIT, fast. Uh, created by the, the creator of Vue.js, um, Vit is using this this style, so it doesn't bundle anything. It it relies on the the browser to to get all the files and then do its uh, uh, bundling, and we'll talk about that later. So we have here uh, Turbo Pack, so written in Rust by the creators of Webpack, by the way, so. Yeah, creator of Webpack, and then Vercel of um, Next.js. And then TurboPack delivers a swift and versatile development experience for application of any scale, right? Any scale, and then thanks to its, uh, to its uh, progressive behavior and adjustable packaging approach. But question is, why TurboPack, right? Aside from, from that, let's see. Features, incremental. Uh, by design, so what is this? It knows which files to rerun. So that's one from TurboPack. Another one, uh, ecosystem uh, friendly, which is it supports TypeScript, JSX, WebAssembly, and more. Another one, lightning fast HMR, which is very important for our productivity as developer when writing code. So. Faster HMR than Webpack, no matter how big is the app. So this is O of 1 in time complexity, meaning it doesn't matter if the, the code is scaling up. The that, that, that time that you'll see uh, your changes, the HMR is still you know same. It doesn't matter. You have uh, 5,000, 10,000 modules in your React application. It doesn't matter. It's still fast. A few seconds. Uh, what else? Rack server components. You know, it supports Rack server components, and this is due to SWC that it's uh, TurboPack is using under the hood, and you'll see that later, the architecture of TurboPack. So it it's, uh, supports Rack server components. And by the way, if you haven't 
uh, use Rack Server components. It's available in Next.js, the latest uh, version of Next.js. And it's just weird. By default, JSX in Next.js 13 are server components. And you have to, to, to write use client in your JSX just to make it uh, work in the browser. So meaning, Rack Server components, um, you cannot use use effect. You cannot use use state in those JSX. It's kind of weird, but that's how it works. But uh, we're drifting now to the topic. And then, uh, what else? Simultaneous uh, multi NV targets. Um, yes, build and optimize for multiple environments together. Browser, server, edge, SSR. Um, what else I can say here? Yeah, in, in VIT, just a comparison, in VIT, uh, the, the, the bundling for the dev environment is different from the production. So in VIT, it's using ES build for the dev, for, for the development environment, while it's using roll up config for the uh, uh, production. Mm. Why? Because ES build, uh, there's a problem in, in letting ES build do the building for the production. That's why even you separated them uh, together. But uh, Turbo Pack will have its you know same for the development and for the production. And what else? Turbo Pack will also power Next.js. So Bersel is planning to use Turbo Pack to create a remote cache. So another one. So this remote cache, it's like imagine you have cache in your laptop, Windows or, or MacBook, right? But uh, in, in Turbo Pack, this is not yet available, by the way. In the coming future, you will have a single source of truth of, of cache in the cloud. And what does it do is from the cloud, those cache, you can sh it can be shared in in every developer. Now you have same cache from from <laughs> from just uh, uh, that um, cloud base, one cache for everyone for for development and for production. So you can share benefits is uh, startup time is very fast since it's already cache. You can just fetch it from from the cloud and then it's just gonna work out of the box. So why replace Webpack aside from you know slow uh, uh, development? So Webpack uh, was created 10 years ago, retains its detailed architecture despite web development's uh, s uh, significant growth. Uh, Webpack's architecture isn't suited for, for large scale, uh, incremental builds, and it's difficult to, to fix due to, to numerous uh, dependent plugins. Changing Webpack's architecture while while maintaining backwards compatibility is challenging, as uh, it's risk-breaking users' uh, existence in, in implementations. However, uh, RS Pack later, uh, I'll, I'll show you that it's built for uh, Webpack compatibility, and see it later, the difference between Turbo Pack and RS Pack. Anyways, let's move on. Cache invalidation is often another pro uh, problem, um, often uh, sensitive, causing extensive rebuilding when small changes are made. Uh, what else? Incremental builds. Cache lookup helps uh, skip redundant uh, work, but with, with many modules, it can lead to considerable cache lookup costs. So there's a cost in, in cache lookup. Now, let's go to TurboPack's architecture. What is underneath of TurboPack? So, Vercel created layering system using Rust as the base. Rust offers, so why Rust, by the way? Rust has this parallelism. You know, multi-threading, since um, the problem with JavaScript is single-threaded and can do much. You cannot use uh, your computer's CPUs, all the, the, the resources in your computer. So that's why a lot of, of JavaScript toolings nowadays are built in Rust because of the you know, concurrency parallelism. But anyways, uh, aside from parallelism in Rust, shared memory is good. In, uh, in security, but it's, it's more challenging. The problem is it's more challenging to write uh, Rust than JavaScript. Uh, another one, why even you pick ESBuild? ESBuild is written in Go. Go is easier to write than, than Rust. Go also can do multi-threading, by the way, or concurrency. Um, yeah, so difficult to write than JavaScript, but to encourage plugin development, Vercel supports both JavaScript and Rust, you know, Rust for, for plugin interfaces. 
and then developers can start writing, uh, can start uh, with, with JavaScript and then port it to Rust afterwards. And then Turbo Engine. So uh, it has Turbo Engine, a core engine for, for common tasks like caching and validation and, and incremental builds. And then Vercel is uh, using SWC. This one, SWC. Uh, it's a modern transpiler built in, in Rust that replaces Babel. SWC is 20 times you know, faster than, than Babel or Babel on a single threaded and 70, pa uh, 70 times faster for four cores. Um, so SWC, you can also use it in VIT. So they, they didn't, they, uh, Vercel teams, they didn't write their own transpiler since they know how good SWC is. They j and it's built, in, uh, it's built on, uh, using Rust, so they just use SWT as part of their you know, bundling. As, as a bus, but only as transpiler, by, by the way, not, not bundler. Sorry about that. So um, moving on, Turbo Pack. So here it is, uh, a bundler handling CSS, static assets, WASM, images, fonts, and more leveraging SWC. And after that, of course, Next.js and other JS frameworks can use Turbo Pack as a bundler. So that's the, the architecture of it. And then, oops, uh, taking pictures, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so that's how it looks like. Uh, moving on. So why Turbo Pack is fast? Just a quick one. So Turbo Pack's um, impressive speed is attributed to its incremental computation engine. So it looks like this. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, it works. It's working. So in a typical uh, bundler, the process involves reading files, right? Uh, yes, reading files. So read, and then uh, bundling them, concatenating them, bundling, concatenating, and then performing multiple tasks. However, in Turbo Pack, Turbo Pack takes different approach by keeping track of, of inputs and outputs of each function. So it's similar, it's like caching the, the function, but and not only the function itself, but the parameters, the arguments, and what it returns. And then during the first run, it reads like this. First run, read, write, and then bundles, concatenate files, and remembers, remembers everything, the output. So that's the, the first, the second one, so uh, sub or subsequent uh, runs, um, if a specific file, such as, for example, this one, SDK. So if that file changes or it's modified, so the file system event can, can see that if you change something in that, in that file. Turbo Pack only needs to reduce steps related to that file. That's why you see this grayed out here. Because Turbo Pack will only redo this read file, bundle, concat, but it won't read file the API.ts and bundle its content. So this is the uh, incremental computation which is Turbo Pack is doing. So it only bund bund uh, bundle what the, the file the file that has been been changed. And yeah, uh, with the native support of Rust. And these are the responsible two responsible things why Turbo Pack is, is uh, has this is speed performance. So uh, interestingly, the the Turbo Engine itself is not you know involved in in bundling process. Its main function is to save results in a function. Getting started with Turbo Pack, uh, you have this command here, npx create. Next app example with Turbo Pack, so you have this uh, boilerplate right away, and then you would notice in the script uh, bracket in script um, script block inside your package that JSON you have this next dev dash 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 Turbo, and see, let's do some demo here. But you won't see much here because. Yeah. 
Google Pack. Um, you won't see it in node modules, by the way, but it's inside the next, the Turbo Pack. It's it's hidden, and so this is the 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 template, by the way. And running it looks like this. This is the boilerplate with Turbo Pack. And the only way you can find Turbo Pack being used here, which is not hidden, is in this build folder inside this dot next folder. Inside the build chunks, you can see Turbo Pack node, Turbo Pack node, and that is how it's being used. But since they don't support, they don't support Webpack configuration yet. Uh, you wouldn't see any any config file here that you can migrate Webpack con uh, configuration and then bring it here. So sad to say we we don't we don't have that, but yeah we can we can check out this later after this RS pack after I discuss it. So that's yeah that's that's it. That's Turbo Pack in Next.js configuration. You don't have any configuration yet. It's still in alpha stage. It's still uh, working on it, improving it, adding features, and the only way you can find it again is through this, you know. Uh, build folder. And let's let's move to the next uh, bundler here, which is RS Pack. So, uh, ByteDance and and Balo Software introduced RS Pack to the open source community. If you if you don't know this ByteDance. Uh, it's okay, but probably you know this, right? TikTok. They're the the company behind TikTok. So ByteDance is is um is the company behind this um uh, mobile app, which is you know a lot of uh, people are using. So uh yeah, that was the the chi the the tech giant behind this um uh, popular platform. Um. And then here it is, RS Pack. So they open sourced their own bundler in their own company, which is good. So they, they've been using RS Pack. So you know, imagine TikTok and not only TikTok, other applications or internal applications within that ByteDance company. It's been using RS Pack for a while and now they're sharing out, they're sharing it uh, to the community, to, uh, to, to everyone. So this is a, also a fast Rust based web bundler, same as Turbo Pack. You have this fast startup combining TypeScript and Rust with a parallelized architecture again because it's it's a Rust lightning speed HMR so it doesn't matter again how big is the application 10,000 uh, modules 50,000 modules you still get the same HMR speed that's lightning speed when you hit that control S or command S you'll see the changes right away in your second screen which is very productive uh, webpack compatible how do you know that? If any one of you here is good in, in, in Webpack configuration, you can bring that skill in and bring it to, to uh, RS Pack. You, know? you don't have to relearn any tools. Unlike in Vit, you have to relearn roll up configuration, although it's easy, it's readable, more readable than, than Webpack. Here in, in RS Pack, it's, it's uh, Webpack compatible by default. Batteries included. Out of the box support TypeScript, JSX, CSS, right, CSS module, SAS, and more. Um, production optimizations, you know, such such as tree shaking, which is very important, and minification have uh, integrated implementations here. Um, framework agnostic, not bound to any front end framework. Everyone can use it, and to get started. You only need to run this npm create rs pack at latest, so you have the latest version, and you would notice in the script rs pack at serve demo time, and just to show you,
we go, R is back, running it here, R is back React. So just running that, that uh, command will give you this uh, RSpec application in React. I, you can choose, by the way, React with Solid, Svelte, um, Vue.js, but um, no Angular yet. Sorry. Is any Angular developers here? Any Angular? Uh, that's OK, right? Because Angular is having version 16, and you have guys, you start having these signals, which is really good. It's going to change. Angular, by the way, is going to change the whole uh, thing in, in Angular, just like class-based versus React books in React world, and also class-based in Vue.js versus the, the Composition API. But guess what? Angular is also having a revolution, uh, revolutionary way of writing Angular. It's going to be different for the next months. Standalone components of ES build with Vit is also being gonna be used in, in Angular, I think next month, and then the signal also. So great, great news for, for any Angular developers here. Finally. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, let's go back to the code. RSpec demo, here it is. Um, yeah, you can see it in node modules, it's there. RSpec, going back here, what's good about this is you will notice here our RSpec config that it looks like. Hold on. Let's move it here. What do you know? It's similar to Webpack configuration, right? You have these modules, you have these uh, regex, and then. Interfaces in Webpack you can do optimization, right? Split chunks. So this is also what you would do in in Webpack, and you have plugins also. So what's good is again, if you already know Webpack and you want to migrate to RSpack. And it's going to be uh, easier for you So since you already know Webpack. Unlike Turbopack, right? You don't have this. It's not yet uh, supported by default. They didn't, they didn't do that from the ground up. And what RSpack or what Turbopack would want you to do is to write JavaScript and then as a plugin and then port it to, to their um, bundler. But here, RSpack, yeah, you can use your, your talent here, your skills here in in writing Webpack configuration. So, mm. so same thing you can see here, same React application. You have the app JSX. Nothing else. Nothing else is has changed, except only for the bundlers here, and uh, not that one. The this one the node module and RSpec configuration. And then, of course, running the RSpec serp for development. And then when you're ready to deploy your application, RSpec build. And here is the RSpec uh, package, which is a CLI. So that's it for this uh, RSpec. Now going back here, um, we're almost done here, but that's good because we have time for Q and A, question and answer. So summary here is gonna. To I'm just going to summarize these things. Uh, TurboPack and RSpack, they're both Rust-based bundlers. Lightning and also have this Lightning fast HMR. RSpack has Webpack compatibility by default, while TurboPack does not have. And um, what else? Last but not the least, which is one I want I want you to to, to the take away. Uh, Vit, TurboPack, and RSpec provide improved development 
uh, developer's uh, experience, which is good. Which is, if you're gonna ask me, yeah, you can just pick any one of these because it will help you save time instead of you know waiting for for uh, for the app to rebuild to see the changes while you guys sometimes would check your your Twitter or Facebook or or Instagram, which is you know uh, a very inconvenient way of of you know. Uh, not not concentrating on what you're doing. So, um, resources, vitjs that dev. These are the the documentation Turbo Pack uh, Turbo that that build pack, and RS Pack dev. And yeah, man, merci beaucoup. <laughs>